I spent the last week building a giant willow tree house in Enshrouded as part of a small medieval fantasy themed village on the rocks here. And I am so happy with the way this build turned out. This is the build that I submitted to the recent Enshrouded Architects of Wonder building contest, which was so much fun to see all of the inspiration and creativity from everyone over there, and huge congratulations to all of the winners. I didn't end up getting nominated myself, I think my build might have been a little complicated compared to what they were looking for, because I did receive some comments not knowing I had actually built the tree, and thinking that it was a location in the game, or the other way around, of people who really liked the tree, but because my photos were taken from a little far away, they found it hard to find some of the detail and houses on the hillside. So I really can't wait to show you around in greater detail today with a full walkthrough and tour of the build. So I hope you get inspired and I hope you enjoy. So with that said, I wanted to give you a brief overview of how I planned out this build before we do the tour. And this is by no means a tutorial. If you're interested in tutorials, I do plan to do individual videos kind of covering how I built each of the little builds as part of this big build. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. But with that said, I started by flattening out the top of this uh, big rocky hill basically creating a space for the giant tree as well as a little step down for the smaller medieval house. And then after that was done, I started blocking out the hillside. I really wanted to create more of a rolling hills feel from the previously really steep jagged rock that was here. And I think it started turning out really well. I used the stone for that. And when the basic shape was kind of blocked in, I started smoothing everything out using flower soil and grass and the rake and everything to create my smooth hill. And once I was really happy with that, I started working on the giant tree, where I used the fertilized farm soil to build it. And again, I'll go over a more detailed video of how I built the tree, but it was a really, really fun project and a really interesting concept to try. And once the outline of the tree and branches were complete, I then started working on the smaller of the two uh, larger medieval homes. And I think it turned out really well. Also kind of started outlining where I wanted the hobbit houses in the hill and sort of just planning out the village a little bit. And that brings us to the current state of the build right now as you see it with the leaves on the willow tree, all the houses complete. And I do plan to do a lot more on this build in the future, so definitely stay tuned for some fun live streams and build videos to continue working on this build. But with that said, let's do a tour now. So we start off at the base of the hill here, and I've started kind of creating some little terraced gardens here in the side of the hill. And these are just for some basic plantings, little well and stuff. Kind of becoming the beginnings of what will become a larger farm area down here. I plan to create a large farm field in this flat section. And then possibly even a little barn over here in this location. Which would be kind of fun. So I definitely can't wait to kind of start working on those soon. And then we head right over here to the first of the two hobbit houses. And this is the larger one here. So I've just kept things pretty simple. A uh, simple build palette and everything just to kind of accentuate the old rustic fantasy feel. Uh, so this hobbit house I thought was a really cool spot for the farmer here to maybe come in here with a little kitchen, enjoy a nice fresh meal from the gardens and farms that will be out there. So I've got our seed beds, some storage for seeds or things right over here. And then a larger bedroom here, uh, which I thought filled the space nicely back here. And I want to eventually expand these hobbit houses out kind of creating a whole tunnel system and things throughout the hill that connects them all. So I definitely have lots of work to do, but really can't wait. And I think it turned out very nice, at least for being able to submit something to the competition. And uh, yeah, so that's the larger of the two Hobba houses. Then we head out here and up this little path, which then takes us into the rocks here, where we have the first larger of the two medieval type houses here. Uh, and this one is a big inn and tavern. And I used a really cool steep roof technique for these builds, and I'll definitely be doing a video showcasing that at some point, so do stay tuned. But starting off at the bottom here, we just have a big wraparound patio here, and I want to put some seating little tables back here soon as well. Uh, but this is just propped up on some big stone arch columns here. Um, and then if we kind of walk around, we've got a couple entries into the build. 
We've got the first one here, and down here in the basement or cellar is the little room for the carpenter. So I've got his table saw, a little workbench and things. And then we've also got another entrance or exit over here, where we just have some expanded area, possibly for workshops, for storage, for uh, some seating down here or something. So just a neat little base to the build. And then we head up here. And this is the main tavern level of the build, where we have our larger dining hall with a beautiful view out there. And then the little bar, little kitchen with a larger fireplace here to provide warmth throughout the build. Little wine barrel, and yeah, just a little kitchen over here, a little stove and everything. And then we head up the stairs to the inn portion of the build. So up here, this is how the steep roof looks from the inside. And we have four beds over here. For people who want to stay the night, a little reading nook or something right over here. And then a larger bathroom in here for all of them to share. So I went with a tub, a little bucket of water to fill it with hot water in the evenings. And then the shower over here, a little towel rack, some little benches there, a little candle. And we've got a little sink and vanity over there. So just a nice large bathroom that didn't feel too cramped for uh, possibly being shared among four people staying here. So with that, we then head down and continue up the hill. So going on this little pathway here, I've just gone with the dirt path using some little stones here with uh, to kind of act as little stepping stones and things. And then just some cool plants along the pathway, some torches here and there. So this wraps up and you can head up there, which we will shortly, or you can head down here through this little tunnel and into the smaller hobbit home, which I have essentially uh, designated to the alchemist at the moment. I think it's just a neat little uh, fantasy feel reading nook potion area, and I thought it uh, I thought it went well with the alchemist for the time being. I might get like a better little tower build or something as part of this area for the alchemist, but yeah, we then have a couple little reading pods. Uh, so maybe if you want like a peaceful spot to study, you could go in here or in here. This is just kind of the luminous growth and candles that I use to light this place. Uh, and then we've got just a little secret bookshelf door back here where you have the restricted section. And this is where maybe potions or recipes or things that the alchemist is kind of keeping hidden uh, could go. And I want to expand this again to have like another little doorway into tunnels and other stuff back here. So definitely stay tuned for more on this build. Yeah, that's the smaller hobbit house. Then we continue up this pathway here, and we get to the smaller of the medieval houses. And the cellar in here, I have designated to the blacksmith here. So just a little smithing forging area, which I thought was pretty cool. It's a little cramped, but it does the trick for the time being. Then we head up these stairs, and again, a little patio that can uh, kind of walk around, be able to see the view from all sides of the build, and then come down into the basement of this build, which doesn't have much. It is very small, so just a little spot. Might put some benches here so you could take off your shoes and things, and then a little uh, secret storage area behind the stairs. So we head up these small stairs, and it is just a small kitchen. This house is essentially could be like the innkeeper's house or just more of like a private house as part of the village here. So yeah, little kitchen there, dining area, and then a single bedroom up here with a little reading section there. So super tiny and cute, and this is probably honestly one of my favorite houses of the build, just with the proportions and the way it turned out. So I, yeah, I really can't wait to show you all uh, how this build was done. I plan to do a full tutorial for it. Um, and then yeah, we head back here. And I have the little juice bar or area where you could get like your coffee in the morning or something. So heading into here, it's just very simple. It's kind of like a self-serve situation. So you've just got some barrels, a little pitcher, a little fireplace, some eating area, and then maybe a longer table where like the goodies or muffins or things in the morning could be set out. Uh, and then we walk out here. I've just got some little outdoor seating with a beautiful view. And back into here where the pathway continues where you've got a little grapple point up there to get to a little glider platform and uh i'll definitely have to show you this little area just thought it was a fun addition to the build with how high this was up on the cliff so you get the beautiful view and you can glide out in that direction um so yeah 
From there, we can then head into the giant willow tree, which is definitely my favorite part of the build. I am so happy with how it turned out. It was such a fun concept to try. You all really liked my previous smaller tree that I built, and uh, this is definitely a second version of something that I thought looked a bit better with better leaves and everything. So that heads up to the tree, that staircase there. But then we can continue through this tunnel and head across a little bridge to an ancient temple here where you could do like the meditation in the morning or something. Uh, it's got a nice view in all directions. You could also glide off of here. Uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, just a nice little place that I thought could have been like the very first build uh, that was here as like an ancient ruins or something. So yeah, with that, let's head up into the tree here. And yeah, this area kind of also lends itself to tunnels and things that could connect into the Hobbit homes and everything, so definitely lots of potential here. So heading up here, this is the flame altar, and this whole build is covered under one maxed out flame altar. So that's been pretty cool. And you spawn in here, you can open this little door, and you've just got a little cozy reading area or a nice little view of the town below from here. So just some simple little gardens, a neat view of the willow tree from below here as well. So definitely just a nice spot. We then head up here and this is sort of the larger storage room of the treehouse build. So uh, I figured it was just a nice way to fill the space here and uh, you obviously need storage. So there's one of them and there's a secondary little storage area with some barrels and just decorative items. A little tiny window just to let some natural light in there. And then heading up here, this is the first treehouse. So we have a little bedroom over here, and that steps up into the first little pod that kind of goes off of the tree with a little sofa reading area, maybe like a little, uh, yeah, a little wardrobe, little desk or something there. And then we can head out. I put these little doorways out onto the branches so that you could, again, glide off the branches and just feel like you're in these hanging gardens up here, which just looks so cool and it's so nice to be able to hang out up here. So yeah, that's the smaller of the tree houses. And then we head back up this way, and this is the larger of the two tree houses that are at the bottom here. So we've got a slightly larger, slightly fancier bedroom here. And then a nice little kitchen dining area, and this is a place for the hunter. I figured it with a tree house, maybe the hunter would like to stay up here. And it makes it feel a little more lived in having an NPC up here in the tree, so yeah, enjoy your breakfast and everything in the mornings in this area. It's just a nice cozy place, and it's got a full fireplace and chimney and everything to cook. So yeah, slightly larger rounded building, and I did do like a neat rounded roof. I used the straw roof for all these builds, and again, I plan to show you in more detail if that's of interest. Uh, but yeah, we head up here, and we've got a little reading nook in the tree right there. Again, another little doorway just out onto a branch because I just love the way we're kind of surrounded by these willow branches. And I want to fill out the tree a little more with a few more of these, but they were really tedious and they took a while to do. <laughs> and yeah, if I do a tutorial on how I did these like willow branches and stuff, um, you'll definitely see how, it, how it's very easy to fall all the time and die all the time. And yeah, so they took a while and I did what I could, but I want to fill it out more because I just love the feel from standing up here. You get a nice view of the village, again, feeling like you're just concealed in these hanging gardens of the tree. So then we head over here, and I have a ladder, or it's also a grapple hook. So if we get in the right place, you can uh, grapple up here to kind of skip the ladder. And we come up to the very top of the willow tree, where you can just walk out on all these branches here. And it's just such a cool feel. I just love how it is up here. We've got a little, like garden area with the little fire brazier there another little fireplace as like a larger i sort of went with an open pavilion look for these two tree houses um and again just a little doorway off onto the branches here uh, just to really connect everything in a fun way um so yeah beautiful little spot to hang out uh in the evenings and i'll show you guys the build at night here soon too but yeah just a really really fun area so that was the build at daytime. I'm definitely so happy with how it turned out so far. And like I said, I do plan to do tutorials on a lot of the main things on this build, kind of recreating them and showing you the process uh, for those of you who want uh, that or are interested. And do be sure to comment if anything else kind of sparks your attention or you'd like to see that. 
So with that said, let's uh, do a little showcase of the build at nighttime. And as it grows closer to nighttime, I also just wanted to show you the sunset and view from up here. What an absolutely awesome location in the center of the map, up high here, where you can just see everything. The pillars of creation off in the distance, and it's just such a cool spot. So I love that the tree kind of lends itself to a really nice tall building in this area to uh, just look out and be, you know, I could literally just stand up here for a long time uh, every evening after an adventure and just sit in the tree, look at the sunset or the sunrise, and it's just such a beautiful spot. So here's the build at nighttime. While I'm up here, I'll just show you the little garden area in the middle of the tree. I just love the lighting. It looks so cool. Again, beautiful view from up here. And then if I drop down here, this is another awesome spot to be uh, at night, is down in this little area. Again, I just love the lighting in the little gardens over here. I put some hidden luminescent uh, blocks underneath the stairs and things to provide that soft blue glow, along with the golden from the candles along the pathways and things. So definitely a neat looking build at nighttime. Also the tree is one of my favorite portions. I did some uh, luminous growth hanging down in between some of the willow branches to uh, again accentuate that fantasy feel and I love how the tree just glows at night. Especially if we head out to like the little walkouts on the branches there. Yeah, so here we go. If we go through this little door, check this out. <laughs> We're just amidst the, the luminous growth here glowing in the tree and looking down on the village. It's just super cool. So yeah, with that said, I do hope you guys enjoyed this build. I definitely had a ton of fun doing it. The build competition was definitely a nice push for me to get the project moving because I know I've been talking about wanting to do something like this for a while now in some of the live streams and things. So I hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out again to all of my channel members. If you would like to download the world files for this build, they will be available soon for my members, so be sure to join that if you haven't already. And do be sure to join my Discord server as well through the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.